In this short video, I'm going to introduce you to Google Earth Engine, and specifically, we're going to talk about how to calculate a building's rooftop area using capabilities that Google Earth Engine gives us. I have provided the website for you on this slide. Also, the website is linked in the comment section of the video. Click on this website, and we'll go ahead and see how to create an account. Once you are in the main page of Google Earth Engine, Right over here, you need to click on sign up and create an account so you can use that account in the code editor of Google Earth Engine. I'm not gonna sign up again because I already have an account that is associated with my Gmail. So you need to do the same and create an account that is connected to your Gmail. Once you've created your account in the main page, you can read some introductory, introductory information about Google Earth Engine. Um, how it can be used for sciences and engineering, and also how you can use the code editor. So when you click on this button, learn about the code editor, it gives you some information about different panels and different boxes in the code editor. For example, here is when you write your code, here is when you see the map, and here is where you see the results that you want to. Next, what you're going to do is click on code earthengine.google.com to be directed to um, this code editor page. This is very similar to what you have in your Google Map, on Google Map app in your different devices, including your smartphone. You can change the view to satellite or map, and you can do other zoom in and zoom out exactly like you do it in the um, Google Maps app of your smartphone. I'm going to focus on small area i'm going to focus on minneapolis st paul and go on campus to show you how you can create um, area of one simple building all right so this is campus and i'm going to choose the satellite area the first thing that i want to do i want to create the total area of the campus and that's going to be using these tools that are available to me so this tool specifically it allows me to draw a shape so I'm going to click on that and you can see as soon as I click on the draw a shape, something pops up over here that tells me that I'm creating a geometry. I'm going to call this geometry, I'm going to change the name and instead of having the name of geometry, I'm going to call it boundaries or boundary. All right, so on the map, I'm going to go over the boundary of university. I want to figure out what is the boundary or area of the university. So. I'm going to do it a little bit faster. You will uh, spend a little bit of more time to create more nodes or more dots over here to be more accurate. This is north side, and then I will continue to create a boundary for the south side of the campus. Now you can see that the two areas that I created, I have 19 vertices. This boundary has added over here. If I don't want to see it anymore, I can uncheck this box or if I want to change the color you can click on this edit button and change the color to something that you want to let's say I want this color and then click OK you'll see the boundaries that you have created next step is how to calculate the area of campus so what I'm going to do is to create a comment section in order to give Google information that I'm not writing a code, I'm just writing a comment, you need to type two slashes over here and then write your comment. My comment would be calculating area of the University of St. Thomas. In order to calculate the area of the geometry, the polygons, the boundary polygons that I have created, I need to define a variable and the variable contains a number that gives me the area so in order to um, define this variable in google earth engine script section which uses javascript i need to type var which represents variable and the variable that i'm going to define is going to be boundary area so boundary i'm going to use um, underscore area this variable is going to give me the area of this polygon that I created, right? And the name of that polygon, that geometry was boundary. And notice that the B in the middle of it is capital. 
and JavaScript or Google Earth Engine is case sensitive. So what I'm going to write, I'm going to write boundary. What do I want to do with it? I'm going to calculate. Uh, first of all, make sure that you're not making any spell mistakes like me. There we go. Fix that. And now what, what do I want to do with boundary? I want to calculate its area. So in Google Earth Engine, to calculate the area, you use the function dot area and then brackets. So this would calculate the area of these two boundaries that I have, right? But now I want to print this. Now this will calculate the area. I want to print the calculated area. So uh, press enter, go one line down. I'll be writing print. First of all, I'm going to give my, myself an information of what this is. So this is going to be the area of the University of St. Thomas campus. And by default in Google Earth Engine, the area is in meters squared. Remind myself the area. Okay, notice that because I'm writing a text, a string, the string is within quotation mark. And then I'm going to add a comma. So I need to write the variable that I want to write on. And the variable is boundary underscore area. So this variable that I have written over here is the variable that I defined over here. Great. So I'm going to add semicolon at the end of it. Now, this is a good time to save your work. I'm going to save my work because I have created an account using my Gmail. Automatically, it recognizes my account. I'm going to uh, name this ENGR467 rooftop area. Then it's going to ask you if you want a file name for this specific piece of code, and I'm going to call it rooftop. Okay, now it's time to run this piece of code and see what is the area of the campus. I'm going to click run, and you will see that after a couple of seconds, you have the area of the campus in squared meters printed over here. Okay, now we have the area of campus, but what we want to calculate is the area of a rooftop. The process is exactly the same. Again, I'm going to switch back to satellite to be able to see the uh, buildings in, on the campus. I'm going to zoom in. First of all, you can see that green polygon is kind of interfering, right? So in order to, uh, I'm going to select the green polygon and uncheck that so I can see the rooftops better, right? Again, we are going to create a new geometry. So when you hover over the geometry area, you can add a new layer. As soon as I click a new layer, a new layer called geometry is added to this list. And also it's added over here, right? Again, geometry is a general name. I'm going to change this to, because this building that I'm going to calculate its rooftop area is Anderson Student Center. So I'm going to change the name of this geometry to ASC, which stands for Anderson Student Center. All right, if I go over here, you can see that it's also changed to ASC2. I haven't, I haven't drawn the area yet. So let's change the color first to a better color. I'm going to select this orange color. Click OK. Now click on Draw a Shape, and then do my best to create a polygon shape around Anderson Student Center using different nodes or vertices. There we go. So now I have this geometry, this polygon defined over here. Again, what I need to do is to calculate its area. So I'm going to go to line four. Again, add some notes. These notes will help me to understand what my code is about. So I'm going to calculate area of Anderson Student uh, Center in meters squared. The process is going to be exactly the same. I need to define a variable. I'm going to call the variable ASC area 
what I want to do with it is to get the geometry that I defined, and the name of the geometry was simply ASC um, capital ASC dot area brackets, and then I want to print that area so I, I'll be able to see the area. In the quotations, I'm going to write the area of ASC in meters squared and then comma the variable that I defined was ASC underscore area and semicolon followed by semicolon all right now first of all I save it and then I click run you can see that now I have two different areas the first one is the area of the campus overall and the second one is the rooftop area of Anderson Student Center. You can do the same thing for other buildings on campus or on the, the area of interest that you have to figure out what are the areas of different rooftops.